Hello, this is Dylan Moore doing a relaxed and quick one today in relation to a current event and how it relates to a topic that we speak about a lot on this show. I stumbled across recently, or today, in fact, a ad by the Trump campaign actually going after Ron DeSantis and how apparently while Ron was in Congress, or when DeSantis was in Congress, he kept pushing a national sales tax that would replace the uh, income tax. And I, I would suspect, I would hope, the FICA taxes, the, the Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security taxes that get taken out of everybody's paycheck and replace it with a 23% sales tax. Now, the Trump campaign was making fun of him for this because if apparently if you do the math in a certain way, a 23% sales tax is pretty big and could quite potentially hit a large swath of the population with more taxes than they would be paying as it was with the income tax. However, I think there's a, a very significant merit that needs to be looked at with, with something with a, a national sales tax, which is... Well, which are, there's, there's quite a few of them, but anybody who listens to the show for any amount of time knows that we're actually for a national property tax, and I'll get into that uh, in a minute, but what most people don't realize about the national tax structure, I mean, obviously, if they don't know MMT, is that the taxes don't pay for anything, first and foremost. If you've watched our show for any amount of time, you know that, but when it comes to particularly income tax, and especially particularly, especially the FICA taxes, is that you're punishing people for working. You're punishing people for transactions. Now, the the sales tax is also a transactional tax. And what I mean by that is if you, if you go to work and you get a paycheck, you get taxed for going to work and getting that paycheck. Now, if you turn around and hire somebody to work for you, they're getting taxed for being productive and working for you for that paycheck. So it's, it's this weird contradictory incentive where the better the economy gets, which is to say the more and more people are working, the more and more the tax drains off the system, and the less people are working, obviously, the, the less the taxes get drained. So there's a, there's this inverse, inverse incentive for the government to say, presuming the government actually needs the taxes, which is the, the prevailing idea that we're all working with, is to say, okay, well, the, the more we encourage people to work, the more taxes are going to come in, so the more that the private sector gets punished. What also happens with the income tax is because we have write-offs and businesses, right? The, the, the tax code is, I mean, if you overlooking the Obamacare part, is this massive, complicated labyrinth of how do I avoid calling my money income? How do I avoid calling my money income? Do I have write-offs? Do I have retirement plans? Do I have HSAs? Do I have tax shelters? Do I, I mean, depending on how big you get, the, the more and more complicated <laughs> being able to, to hide those, uh, or not hide, but I mean, prevent your money from getting taxed becomes. And what happens is we've got an entire sector, both in and out of government, chasing around, tracking, you know, like if it's the IRS auditing and trying to find people who are, who are or aren't paying their taxes correctly. And then in the private sector, imagine all the financial advisors that all the brain drain and rigmarole and resource consumption that goes behind financial advisors to say, hey, you're making all that money. Here's what we do with that money so you avoid paying taxes. And one of the things they do with that money or one of the biggest things they do with that money is it goes into retirement plans. And now retirement plans don't necessarily have to go to the stock market, but they usually do. So all this money now flies into the stock market. So now you have this vested interest of people that develop because, hey, those retirement plans are what's feeding the liquidity liquidity that we need to work with or manipulate or whatever the stock market. So the whole thing, uh, that, that whole apparatus, all the, uh, I presume, millions of people working in accounting and taxes and financial planning and audit and government, blah, blah, that's all because they have to track your income. Now, I will give this credit for this for a sales tax, forgetting for a second you know, who exactly the winners and losers might be on the individual level. If we went from a, what we have now, an income tax, and again, I hope presumably the FICA taxes were, were included in that, to some sort of national sales tax, that entire rigmarole, it wouldn't 100% vanish because, I mean, you'd still need the IRS to chase down businesses, but I would it would probably 95% vanish. You, you wouldn't need all these 
financial planners and accountants anymore because you I mean you, you there would be no reason to file taxes all the businesses would file taxes because they would be the ones responsible for collecting and remitting the sales tax and that's what they do in any state that has sales tax so I I think it's worth considering that there's there's a different benefit outside of this individual or that individual paid more or less taxes or would pay more or less taxes with the national sales tax is that there's an, if, if we look at real resources, right, and the human beings and their employment are real resources, imagine the number of people that would be freed up from this garbage of figuring out what to do with everybody's money in order to avoid taxes and they could go get real jobs, both from the private sector and, and within the, the federal government like the IRS, right? And on top of that, I mean, just the just the stock market, I would suspect, would tank. It would absolutely tank, which is maybe one reason why this would never happen, because suddenly all that money, it wouldn't have to be in the stock market anymore. Now, I'm sure a lot of people would keep it there, but the incentive to put it there in the first place and the incentive to keep it there, particularly when you can pull it out, there's no, there's no more... Um, uh, what's the word I want? It's not punishment. It's like punishment. Uh, if you if if you penalty, thank you. there we go. Th- there's no more penalty for pulling your money out early. You you don't. You know, there's no more HSAs anymore. There's uh, there's no. I mean, all of this stuff could just vanish. Just poof, vanish if we didn't have taxes chasing around the income that you made for working. Now, here's my problem with a national sales tax. Forgetting the fact that I, I, apparently what. Um, Ron DeSantis recommended was a 23% sales tax. That's insane. The, go- the government does not need that money. Um, however, it's still a transactional tax. It still punishes making that transaction, if, if that makes sense. So wh- whatever you tax, that, thing's beca- that thing is, a- is essentially punished. Like, and th- this, is the- this is the mindset behind sin taxes, right? Which is, which is to say, we're going to raise the taxes on cigarettes, not because we actually want that tax money, but we want to discourage people from smoking cigarettes by making it prohibitively or uh, more expensive so people don't want to do it anymore. Duh. The, I mean, the, the more you tax something, the more, it, I mean, the the more it gets punished for actually engaging in that thing. If you have a sales tax on everything, you're punishing sales on everything in the same way that you're punishing labor with the income tax. Now, we can argue which one's worse. Um, I, I would still be inclined to lean on the sales tax um, for, the, for the simple fact of, okay, you know, h- how much taxes are you going to be saving this way or the, or the other way? I don't know, but how much money are you going to be saving not paying an accountant? I know a lot of people use TurboTax, fine, whatever, but you get my point. There, like the amount of effort to chase all this money down and figure out what exactly is happening with this money would be all be unloaded onto the businesses, which is annoying as a business, but a business is already set up to be paying taxes anyway and to be just be one more form for them to fill it out at the end of the month or the end of the quarter or the end of the year. Now, we recommend, me and Nima, who, who got this idea from Warren Mosler, the founder of MMT, that... It, there should be a national property tax. And this national property tax, first of all, it does two things. You got you got to recognize that the tax isn't there to actually raise money for the government. So this is a massive hurdle for mines to get over anyway. But this is a non-transactional tax. Property taxes are the only non-transactional taxes. Remember, a transactional tax is every time so, you know activity happens, taxes occur. So there's punishment for activity. In this case, there's punishment for land ownership or property ownership, but it's not transactional, right? Okay, $1,000 is owed by whoever owns this property every year. It doesn't matter how many times the property changes hands. It doesn't matter how much that person works. It doesn't matter how much that person saves. What account it is, if it's in retirement, none of that matters. It's just, here's the amount of money that we know we're going to get. We're not dependent on, okay, what, what's the economy going to do for us to know how much taxes are going to come in? So you can dial in exactly what's going to go on. And then further to that fact, you could, like property tax is ubiquitous over the whole country. You can tap into the system that already exists. So you don't have to bug individuals. You don't have to bug businesses. You just have to bug county governments. The federal government could go, hey, county governments, okay, all those taxes that you're doing, don't change anything. Just add this one, collect that money for us, and remit it to the federal government. 
Now, I said before, if you went from what we have now to the national sales tax, what 90, 95% of the people who would be uh, involved in tax collection, collection and financial planning and all that sort of stuff wouldn't be needed anymore. If you did a property tax, it would be 100%. Okay, maybe 99.999999% because you still need 10 people at the IRS to make sure that the county governments remit their taxes properly, right? But um, you wouldn't have to chase down individuals. You wouldn't have to chase down businesses. You don't have to find them. This is how property taxes work right now. And it doesn't matter what county you're in in what state is that the state goes, somebody needs to pay this property tax. We don't even care who. And if it doesn't get paid... We take the property or we put a lien on the property, depending on what state you are. There's tax deed states and tax lien states, real estate investment opportunities for those who are interested. But uh, we we put a lien on the property or we put the property up for auction to sell it in order to pay the taxes. And then presumably the new person would pay the taxes. Now, uh, libertarians might freak out and be like, oh, my God, that's just renting from the government, which is true. But you're already renting from the government. <laughs> right. <laughs> like the amount of government in, in in total in gesamt, the amount of government that you would be removing versus the amount of government that you would be gaining is is orders of magnitude difference. So I I just wanted to throw this idea out there that um, I get the idea from the Trump campaign. I mean, I get the idea from the Trump campaign. They're looking for a reason to to um, batter a political opponent over the head. Fine, I get that. But I also get the idea where there could be losers on on the poor end of the spectrum if there was a national sales tax on the individual level. However, I think this is missing the forest through the trees, which is as the economy, the economy as a total would suddenly have all these people that could go get real fucking productive labor instead of chasing around all this tax money. So wanted to wanted to give my two cents on that. This is a quick one. Maybe I'll start doing these quick ones more often. I, I was near the studio and didn't didn't have my suit on. I just said, fuck it. We'll just do it like this. So if uh, you, you, you think this is a good idea or not, I want to I want to hear the comments below. Like compare what we got now versus Trump's idea, which is, you know, let's just lower, you know, adjust the tax brackets and add, add child tax credits and whatever uh, to make things more uh, ta- uh to let people get more of their taxes back as the system exists now versus a national sales tax versus what I think is a better best idea, a property tax, national property tax. So this has been Dylan Moore with I Read a TV. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>